welcome to Rome. You've just joined me on my first morning in Rome. This is not the first time I've been in Rome. The last time I was in Rome was over a decade ago. I wonder where 10 years went. So I'm hoping things will have changed a little bit. Maybe things won't have changed too much. A lot's changed. I've just arrived at what I was expecting to be my first fountain of the place. Fountain of Rome, outside this beautiful hotel. I'm not staying here. I'm gonna go walk to probably Rome's most impressive fountain, the tourist spot that is known throughout the world, the Trevi Fountain is. It's about a kilometer this way, so come join me. Three coins in the fountain, each one seeking happiness. Now I'll tell you one thing that Rome isn't short of, is hotels. If you want good hotel recommendations, my advice is to check out tripadvisorbooking.com, all of these hotel websites, Trivago allows you to compare all the hotels, but I think one that's really come up in the recent couple of years, I hate to say it, is the mega giant, the alphabet company, Google. If you go on Google, you can literally find the comparison of all the great hotels. And as we walk down this beautiful street, we start to see recognizable landmarks. It really is one of these marvelous cities, renowned throughout the world kind of a must-see metropolis, sprawling metropolis. It used to be the center of the world. These postcards remind me of how much there is to see in Rome. We're just gonna see, just in this sort of brief day, how much we can see. It is an immense city, it's a beautiful city, but we're gonna see a lot. Well, as I walk towards some of the main tourist spots in Rome, it has to be realized it's going to be impossible to really see everything in Rome, at least in a day. But can we try? My opinion is you need a week to really digest, dissect Rome. In reality, a lifetime, just like any mega city. And what a charming city it is. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut these videos, rather than making one big, long video on Rome, which won't do it justice, I'll do little videos. Happy watching, thank you, sir. On the merits, maybe a little video on the Trevi Fountain, a little video on whatever I see. Look at this. I love this. Beautiful, beautiful. Rome truly is a city of timeless beauty and historical wonder, where the past seamlessly melds with the present again and again. Now nestled atop the Quirinal Hill, one of the seven hills of Rome, lies a hidden gem that beckons travellers and lovers from around the world. This is the Church of St Andrew and Quirinal. As you approach, your eyes are drawn to the magnificent Baroque facade of the church. It's a masterpiece of architectural artistry, but really an introduction to the beauty that awaits inside. This church is not just a place of worship, it is a testament of the enduring power of art and spirituality. Step through the doors and you're transported to a world where faith and art unite in breathtaking harmony. Come here at the right time and sunlight will bathe the marble floors, illuminating intricate patterns and details that stretch out before you. But it's what lies beneath my feet right now that's truly mesmerizing. Right in the heart of this sacred place, this is where we find the ecstasy of Saint Stanislaus Koska. This mosaic inlaid into the floor is a work of profound beauty and religious significance. It captures a mystical moment when Saint Stanislaus Koska had a vision of the Virgin Mary, a vision so intense that it's almost palpable in the mosaic's details. The artistic wonders of course don't end there. Jean Lorenzo Bernini, the maestro of Baroque art, has left his mark within the church. His sculptures are equally remarkable, invoking powerful emotions and spirituality. You may not have even noticed it was here until you looked at the exceptional doorway and then to go in. What a beautiful round church that is. Mega, absolutely mega. They don't do things, well, they didn't do things in half measures, the Romans. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful city. These beautiful displays. This is the uh, embassy quarter around here. Got a lot of embassies, very busy. The police, they're looking after things. Wonderful immense city. Now let's go see the obelisks down here. What video would be complete without seeing an obelisk in 
a random city, but Rome is not just a random city, is it? Without Rome, Europe be what it is. Obviously not. The Romans made a huge impact on this world. Their presence is still being felt. What we do in life echoes in eternity. It's one of these cities just like all of the great European capitals. Behind every corner, behind every wall, there's something to see. Changing the guard action we just saw there on this monumental square. Look at this. Look what we see here with the obelix showing the power of those that control those that rule over us. The obelix with the cross contradiction in itself. I like it. I like it a lot for these statues. Look at the immense power of these European men. The immense power of horses. This stallion here. You can see it's a stallion because it's two testicles. Apollo Creed. It's the Italian stallion. The Quirinal Obelix stands as a remarkable symbol of ancient Egyptian artistry, right in the heart of Rome. Now this monumental obelix, which dates back to the reign of Pharaoh Seti I, which is the 13th century BC. So this has to be one of the oldest monuments in all of Rome. And it really does have an incredible history. It was originally brought to Rome from the Temple of Isis in the ancient city of Helopolis, now modern day Cairo, by the Roman Emperor Domitian in the first century AD, where it was re-erected in the late 18th century by Pope Pius VI. It stands at an impressive 41 meters. It is positioned in front of the Palazzo di Quirinal, which serves as the official residence of the President of the Italian Republic. The juxtaposition of this ancient Egyptian artifact against the backdrop of the palatial Renaissance style palace creates a visual spectacle that seamlessly weaves the threads of ancient history with the modern day significance of Italian governance. As visitors gaze upon the Quirinal Obelisk, I couldn't help but appreciate the layers of history that Rome wears so proudly, and it serves as a poignant reminder in the city's ability to honour and preserve its multifaceted past while continually evolving in the present day. A lot of police presence around this part of Rome. This is government quarters, probably a bit of secret service over here. What I like about Italian politics right now is they've actually got a chance to save themselves from the globalists. The Italians have elected a conservative politician. The woman has been smeared by the mainstream media, the globalist mainstream media, who basically suggests that she's far right. She's not far right. She's just a person that believes in the family, a person that believes in Christian values. What's not to like? There's nothing far right about that. And she strikes me as a good woman. If only Europe had more leaders like that. And you know what? Currently, as I speak, she's the highest rated leader in the world. The press can smear all they like. The public seems to like Oops. it. Talk about wishful thinking. You can't really get more iconic than the uh, yellow Fiat over there. But as we walk away from the sunshine this way, we're going to be walking down the street, trying to avoid being run over by the, the Carabinari. As they, or the police, and as we say, notice dramatic change. We suddenly see a lot more people, and generally, all of these people are tourists, Italian tourists, people from around the world. Tourists come from every corner of the planet to get to this point over here. And this point over here is where three streets used to meet each other. There was water flowed through these streets. I'm sure you already know where we are. Anyone that's potentially seen Rome in the movies or even been to Rome kind of get a sense of feel where we are. But this took 30 years to build. I think it was built 1732 to 1762. And it was built by Nicola Salvi. Now Nicola is a man, not a woman. So I think we can call him Nick Salvi. And look at this. As we come into eye shot of this beautiful site. Now they say, made famous actually, not made famous, but certainly you might remember the film Roman Holiday. I think anyone that takes a holiday through Rome certainly wants to make this part of their Roman holiday. My goodness!
But as you can see, it's like that Instagram, you know, the expectations reality. Expectations are you're gonna get a nice picture of the fountain. Reality is you're gonna be surrounded by a lot of people. Now they say 3,000 euros are thrown into this fountain a day. 3,000. Now it's illegal to try to steal the money. I don't steal off you and you don't steal off me, not even a pinch of pie. You'll see there's police probably guarding the fountain saying, step away, don't climb on the rock. Step away from the puddle, people. I think if it's 3,000 euros a day, it roughly makes 1.5 million to 1.8 million a year, depending on how generous tourists are feeling. And the money for the fountain, it goes to a supermarket around the corner that basically subsidizes the hungry. So the food is very cheap and it's very, it makes it very affordable for the needy. What we've seen in recent years, though, late at night, some people trying to get into the fountain, especially on warmer days, Today's not a warm day. <laughs> they will try to take some of the money. Now that's illegal. Police have been trying to climb down on that. And I think with the new leader that's in power, the conservative leader, they're gonna basically take no exceptions that anyone caught trying to do that will get the full force of the law lay down to them. The uh, police over here constantly having to monitor the tourists because the tourists simply will get too close to the fountain. Some tourists have been known to sort of lean back, fall in. But as you can see, everyone throwing the coins in the story 50 cents in for incredibly popular tourist destination. And they don't make things like this anymore. 18th century, 1732 to 1762, I believe. Beautiful. You know what? Last time I was here, I think it was like in August, you couldn't move. Kind of lucky the fact that this is not as crowded as I remember it to be. You can actually move. The Trevi Fountain is undoubtedly one of Rome's most iconic landmarks, but there are intriguing facts about this magnificent Baroque masterpiece that often go unnoticed. Beyond its stunning aesthetics and the tradition of tossing a coin over one's head to ensure a return to Rome, the fountain serves as a silent witness to the city's ever-evolving culture. Commissioned by Pope Clement XII in the mid-18th century, the fountain's design reflects the city's fusion of classical and Baroque styles, portraying Oceanus, the god of the sea, surrounded by tritons and seahorses. Yet beneath the breathtaking facade, the Trevi Fountain also reveals the intricate relationships between art and power, serving as a testament to the papal authority of the time. The fountain's construction required not only artistic skill, but also the ability to harness a massive water source to bring it to life, a complex feat that showcased the Vatican's control over Rome's water supply. Another fascinating aspect is the meticulous maintenance and restoration that the Trevi Fountain undergoes. It is not just an ancient relic, it is a living piece of art. The fountain is continuously cleaned and restored to its former glory, and the meticulous work that goes into maintaining it serves as a reminder of the enduring value that Rome places on its cultural heritage. In essence, the Trevi Fountain is not just a static attraction, but a dynamic representation of the city's commitment to preserving its artistic treasures. Beyond the spectacle and romance it exudes, it stands as a symbol of Rome's dedication to its historical identity, a lesson in the art of preservation itself. Three coins in the fountain. Each one seeking happiness. The water flowing here is tap water, but I wouldn't recommend drinking the water from the fountain. Some people do. They used to say that if you drank the water from the fountain, it would give you good fortune and serve you well, but the water here is safe, so they say. But I wouldn't recommend drinking this, but I've seen people do it. Anyway, if you like this content, this is the Trevi Fountain. Really, really perfect day for it. I'm now getting super hot. The day started off at four degrees. 
is getting hotter as we speak. Join me on another adventure and I'll see you in the next video.